I like you must have a business card. Oh, well, yes, I do. Thank you. You do? <laughs> At 13, you have your own business card. Okay, that's a nice start. I'll, I'll get in touch with you later. Sure. But what do you do? Oh, well, mainly, I like to call myself a software and cognitive developer, uh, because I love developing with cognitive computing and artificial intelligence. Uh, I am an algorithmist. I love working with designing and implementing algorithms. Uh, I'm a keynote and TEDx speaker. I'm an author. I've written a book, and I'm working on another one about IBM Watson. Uh, and, of course, I'm also an IBM champion for cloud and honorary IBM cloud advisor. Oh, where did Hang I on go a second. wrong? Someone, <laughs> someone just um, uh, get me a plan or countdown. Do you go to school? <laughs> well, I'm currently homeschooled uh, in grade Grade eight going to grade nine now. Wow. Okay, so your bright artificial intelligence is taking over the world. Is that fair to say? <laughs> well, you see, that's actually one thing that I believe a lot of people have the sort of misconception that artificial intelligence is this technology that was made to replace humans at really everything we do, uh, whether it be, you know, our jobs or whatever we do at home every day. But really what I believe is that artificial intelligence was developed and is continuing to be developed for the sole purpose of really augmenting our life and amplifying our skills or capabilities and what we well, can do every day. But, but what about when the computers actually learn that they're better than us? Well, you see, that's sort of called a singularity of artificial intelligence, at which point uh, artificial intelligence has surpassed human intelligence to the point that we cannot control it. But really what I believe at this point, artificial intelligence, I won't go into the details right now since we're limited on time, uh, but the thing is right now artificial intelligence itself as a technology is so foolable and so primitive uh, that either A, we won't reach that singularity point, or B, if we do, it's a very long ways off. Do you, do you understand that, Mark? No. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I wanted to take notes for the exam at you, the end of it. You lost them in the first yeah. Could I perhaps <laughs> offer you a golf ball? You do do this uh, YouTube you. channel uh, which you teach people. What is that all about and who is your target audience? Yeah, sure. Now, I actually have a YouTube channel called Tan May Teachers that I've been running for around six years now uh, and it has over 144 videos and now 22,000 subscribers. And so on it, I love to teach about computing, really programming, you know, these algorithms that I develop, machine learning especially, uh, math, science, and especially technologies like IBM Watson. Because, of course, I like to share my knowledge because I realize that there's this lack of resources for people to learn about technologies like AI, which is why I absolutely love sharing my knowledge through, of course, these YouTube videos, the books that I'm authoring, the keynotes that I have. Uh, and really, Watson comes in here in such a great way because Watson allows me... Watch Watson. Um, sure, no, Mark thinks he's a golfer, but what what is Watson? <laughs> <laughs> now, IBM Watson is essentially a cognitive system uh, that allows developers to incorporate cognitive and machine learning into their applications without having to code in the actual intelligence. And what this means is that, of course, right now, re really the w one of the main reasons developers aren't incorporating more machine learning into their apps is because it's so hard to do. It's really difficult to incorporate intelligence because... Has the, um, I'm going to just take, take this somewhere else, this interview. Has the yeah. heart has the homeschooling association of the world got hold of you as the front person? Oh, uh, well, there is uh, actually a homeschooling legal defense association, I believe, HSLDA in Canada, and I actually had a keynote for them uh, oh, yeah. last year in Niagara Falls. You, I mean, you're the poster boy for, um, for homeschooling, aren't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I did have a keynote for them, and I talked a lot about the advantages of homeschooling and why it's great uh, for kids who want to go into different uh, and really targeted subjects. Okay. I want to get right down to right down to business now. <laughs> when did you realize you were bright and smart? And smarter than most? <laughs> well, I mean, I originally started coding when I was five uh, with simple languages like Fox Pro and Batch. Uh, but eventually, at nine years old, I had my very first iOS app accepted into the Apple App Store called Tea Tables. But did, did, did your mum and dad do something to you between zero and five? <laughs> they plug you into the wall? Or do, I mean, what did they do to you? At five, at five you, were, you were Are coding. you smarter than your mum and dad, by the way? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I, I have... Uh, well, my dad used to be, work as a computer programmer, but he used to work with, you know, uh, simple, regular programming languages like Fox Pro, Batch, uh, a little bit of C, etc. Uh, but you see, now I'm really interested in artificial intelligence and how it can actually be implemented on all these different platforms. You'd be a nightmare to teach. Apps. You'd be an absolute nightmare to teach, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, because you, you'll be smarter than oh, well, the lecturers. And the, would I be. Never, wa never want to get in an argument with you, <laughs> ever. But I would like to see you on a quiz show because I think you would <laughs> nail that. Well, you see, there is one thing that I've been working on, uh, and it's a essentially an app called Ask Tanmay, an NLQA.